Blessed is the kingdom of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of God and the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace in the whole world, for the stability of the holy churches of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for those who enter it with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. For our Archbishop and Father Sabas, the Honorable Presbyters, the Deacons in Christ, and all the clergy and laity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our country, the President, and all those in public service, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this parish and city, for every city and country, and for the faithful who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for favorable weather and abundance of the fruits of the earth and temperate seasons, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For travelers by land, sea, and air, for the sick, the suffering, the captives, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another in our whole life to Christ our God. Lord our God, whose power is beyond compare and glory is beyond understanding, whose mercy is boundless and love for us is ineffable, look upon us and upon this holy house in your compassion. Grant to us and to those who pray with us your abundant mercy. For to you belong all glory, honor, and worship to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever into the ages of ages. peace, let us again pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another in our whole life to Christ our God. For yours is the dominion, the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Praise the Lord, Lord O my God, soul. Your people in I shall and praise the Lord while I live. I shall sing to my God as long as I exist. Save us, O Son of God. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob. His hope is in the Lord his God. 
In peace, let us again pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For you are a good and loving God, and to you we give glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. of Hades, and has granted to the world great mercy. 
μάρτυρα σου, Κύριε, αντιάθληση αυτών, στεφάνους εκομίσαντο της αυθαρσίας έξου του Θεού ημών. Σχόντες γα την ισχύ σου, τους τυράννους καθήλων, έθραυσαν και δαιμόνων, τα ανισχύρα θράση. Αυτόν και εσύ και εσύ εσύ, Χριστέ ο Θεός, σώσον τα ψυχάς ημών. The hymn of our church is on page two. Blessed are you. Protection of Christians unshameable, intercessor to our holy maker unwavering, reject not the prayerful cries of those who are in sin. Instead, come to us for you are good, your loving help bring unto us who are crying in faith to you. Hasten to intercede and speed now to supplicate as a protection for all time. Theotokos for those who honor you. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For you are holy, our God, and to you we give glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever into the ages of ages. Amen. Holy God, who dwell among your saints, who are graced by the seraphim of the thrice holy King, and glorified by the cherubim, and worshipped by all the heavenly powers, we have brought all things out of nothing into being. We have created man and woman in your image and likeness, and the Lord that we all in the Let us be attentive. 
O clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with the voice of rejoicing. Wisdom. The reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Galatians. Let us be attentive. Brethren, I would have you know that the gospel which was preached by me is not man's gospel. For I did not receive it from man, nor was I taught it. But it came through a revelation of Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my former life in Judaism, how I persecuted the church of God violently and tried to destroy it. And I advanced in Judaism beyond many of my own age among my people. So extremely zealous was I for the traditions of my fathers. But when he who had set me apart before I was born and had called me through his grace and was pleased to reveal his son to me in order that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not confer with flesh and blood, nor did I go to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me. But I went away into Arabia, and again I returned to Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to visit Cephas and remained with him 15 days. But I saw none of the other apostles except James and the Lord's brother. Peace be to you, the reader. Arise, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be with all. And with your spirit. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. Let us be attentive. Glory The Lord said, There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, full of sores, who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades being in torment, he lifted up his eyes And so Abraham far off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy upon me and send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that you in your lifetime received your good things and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here and you are in anguish. And besides all this, Between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able, and none may cross from there to us. And he said, Then I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they also come into this place of torment. But Abraham said, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham. But if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to them, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you. Chair School students, please come to the front.
This is the day that the Lord has made. It is so good to see all of you here. Uh, today, in the Gospel reading, we heard the story. It's a parable. And uh, it is a story that I would like to retell you, but for you to have two questions in mind. So the story is about a very poor man, Lazarus, who lived next to a very rich man. We don't know his name, but the very poor man, Lazarus. So today I want you to talk about Lazarus with me. And so as I retell you the story, just make mental notes. Do you feel bad for Lazarus? Do you sometimes feel good about Lazarus? Right? And good for him. So let me tell you the story and you just make mental notes and try to figure out when do you think good for when, when do you feel good for him, when do you feel bad for him, okay? So here's the story. It says that there was one day a rich man who was always dressed in the finest of clothes, who had a party every day. I know, that's the reaction of my students <laughs> who are notorious for parties, but not that every day. Who goes to a party, right? But this man had parties every day, and he ate a lot of food. He wasted a lot of food. But at his gate lay a man. His name was Lazarus. And Lazarus was completely poor. He had no money to buy food. You feel bad for him, right? Good. So keep, keep mental notes about that. Lazarus was also very sick. He had many sores all over his body. And sometimes the dogs would come and lick his sores. But the rich man never once stopped to talk to him or to give him any food. And then they both died. And after that died, the rich man went to a place where he was suffering. But Lazarus was together with saints in heaven, with Abraham, and he was in a place of comfort. He was very good. Okay? That is generally the story. Did you make some mental notes? Did you sometimes feel good about Lazarus, sometimes bad about Lazarus? Yeah? All right. So who wants to tell us when you felt either good or bad about Lazarus? Is that the hand up? Go ahead. Hold the microphone and tell us. I'll actually turn it on for you. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I felt bad for him whenever the dogs were licking his sores or whatever. Why did you feel bad when the dogs licked his sores? Because it may have hurt. It may have hurt, right? Yes. Um, why else would you feel bad if the dogs lick his sores? Uh, we're still on this one. Did you want to go to the next one? We're still talking about the dogs licking his sores, right? Did you feel good or bad about that? Bad, all of you? You too? Yes. Well, raise your hand if you have ever been licked by a dog. Just about everybody, right? Good. Did you like it? Keep your hand up if you liked it. Okay, some of you didn't, but some of you liked it. Why do you feel bad that people, that dogs are licking Lazarus' uh, wounds? Because when you got licked by a dog, you did not like it, right? So that's why you assume that Lazarus didn't like it either, right? But you liked being licked by a dog? Yes? Not bitten, but licked. Did the dog ever lick you? You have a dog at home? Yeah. Does she ever lick you? Yes. And that's like a kissy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you see, I feel really bad for Lazarus. Because the dogs were the only ones who showed him some kindness. There were all these people that were going by him, and nobody ever showed him any kindness. But the dogs, you know, they licked him. It wasn't a bite, so probably he liked it. Yeah? 
Plus, you know, when you have a little boo-boo and there's blood, do you always go like, like that, right? Or go to mommy to give you a kissy, to daddy to give you a kissy, right, sometimes? Yeah, because there's something in our saliva that makes our blood better when we get, uh, uh, when we get uh, uh, a wound, right? It's called lysosome. You'll learn in biology. Trust me, yes? So the dog showed him kindness, but I feel bad for Lazarus because maybe he didn't like to be licked by a dog. I don't like that. But uh, all, and some, half of you don't like to be licked by dogs, right? But also because there were no human beings who uh, showed him kindness. You had your hand up earlier. Did you feel good or bad about Lazarus? Good. Why? When did you feel good about Lazarus? Because the dogs were um, licking him and I have dogs that lick me all the time. Okay, because he had, uh, because there were dogs that were licking him, and you have dogs, and you like that. Hold on just a second. Did you feel good or bad? Can you hold the microphone? I cannot reach. I felt bad because the, the because he no ate. Why did you feel bad? He no ate. He did not have any. Because he didn't eat, right? He had no food. And imagine seeing all those parties every day going on in that house. And you can imagine that they were throwing a lot of food away, right, from those parties. And instead of giving him something to eat, he had absolutely nothing to eat. I felt really bad about that. Um, Do I just say something? Put it closer to um, you. I felt good for life. When did you feel good about um, Lazarus? Because he went to heaven. Because he went to heaven, right? Did you hear at the end he went to heaven? Were you all happy about that? Yes, because after suffering so much in this life, finally Lazarus then went to heaven, right? That's a good thing. What else? Do you feel good or bad about uh, for Lazarus? Hmm? Do you want to say something? No? Anybody else? Yes. Yeah, put it close to your mouth. I felt good for him when he went, when the dog showed him love. Even, yeah. Yeah, we feel good, right? When the dogs show him love. And that means that every one of us, we want to be loved, correct? And when somebody shows us that love, then we feel fulfilled. And so Lazarus may have had some good moments like that in life uh, when the dogs were coming to him. But if the dogs were mean and sometimes he couldn't shoo them away, then maybe, because that's what the story says, he couldn't even shoo them away. So sometimes the dogs were good, sometimes were bad. It just differs, right? Some of them were good, some of them were not. So. We feel good and we feel bad about Lazarus. Did he have any friends? No, and how do you feel about that? Good or bad? Bad, right? Because he wanted to have friends. But there was nobody there. He just lay at the man's door and he couldn't receive any food, right? So he's sick, he is poor, and he doesn't get any help. What do you think the rich man should have done? Oh, hold on. You. Give him food. Right. The rich man should have given him food. So let me tell you that in our church, sometimes people come, and these are people who sometimes are sick, sometimes they're hungry, sometimes they don't have enough clothes. And you know what we try to do to our best of abilities? To help them. So sometimes people come, and they say that they don't have anything to eat. And we give them some gift cards to take to the store, to the grocery store. And then they get food for themselves and for their families, right? Other times, some people say that they ran out of medicine. Yes. And you know how important for some people medicine can be, right? There are some people who are sick and depend on medicine to be able to live well. And so we are doing our best to help them with medicine, if this is something that we can. Sometimes people lose their jobs, and we are trying to help them to pay maybe for their rent. 
right? And you know how we do that? Because all of you are helping. This is how we're able to do all of that. Sometimes their car breaks down. Can you get to work if your car breaks down? No, so we help them with the repairs for their cars, right? You see, what Lazarus didn't have was a loving church around him. The rich man didn't help him. He didn't have a loving church. And there are many people who are Lazarus, who are like him in our world. And it is our duty to help them, right? And so every time you see somebody in need, you have to help them just because you know how bad they feel. Do you see how badly you felt about Lazarus, right? When he suffered. But also, think about this. The poor person you are helping might end up where? Say it loud. Heaven. In heaven. And how do we call the people who go to heaven? Saints. Would you like to help a saint? Yes. So every time somebody is in need, help those saints. I hope he just builds a thousand more houses and then we just give them all away. Right. It would be great if we could build a thousand more houses and give them all away. And do you know that actually in this parish, we have helped people build homes? Seriously. Because there are people who, for example, in Mexico, never owned a home. They would live in a little shack. And people from our church, some of them are right here sitting with us today, they went and built them homes, right? Other times, people's homes were destroyed by a hurricane. And so people from this church went and repaired their homes. Isn't that beautiful? That's exactly what you are saying. And again, every time you see somebody in need, help them. And who knows? They might end up as a saint in heaven praying for you. God bless you. And grant that all is guarded by your power, we may give glory to you, to the Father, in the Son, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. One by one, all desires and pleasures, worthy to approach, draw near, or minister to you, the King of glory, to serve his great and awesome, and for the heavenly powers. But because of your ineffable and measurable love for us, you became man without alteration or change. You have served as our high priest and Lord, the fallen heaven trust to us the celebration of this liturgical sacrifice without the shedding of blood. For you alone, Lord, our God, rule over all things in heaven and on earth. You are seated on the throne and the cherubim, the Lord of the seraphim and the King of Israel. You alone are holy and dwell among your saints. You alone are good and great to hear. Therefore, I implore you, look upon me, your sinful and unworthy servant, and cleanse my soul and heart from evil consciousness. Enable me by the power of your Holy Spirit, so that vested with the grace of Christ, I may stand before your holy table and celebrate the mystery of your holy and pure body and precious blood. If you come with bowed head and pray, do not turn your face away from me, nor take me from among your children, but make me your simple and unworthy servant, worthy to be offered to you these gifts. For you, Christ our God, are the offer and the offer, the one who receives and is distributed unto you, we give glory, together with your eternal Father and your all holy and life giving spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. We mystically represent the cherubim in the thrice holy hymn to the life giving tree, and let us set aside all the cares of this life, that we may receive the King of all and his bliss scored by the Ajali Host, and we are and we are the Lord. Represent the cherubim in the thrice holy hymn to the life giving tree, to let us set aside all the years of this life. That may receive the King of all and visible escorted by their jolly host. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
us and for those who hate us. May the Lord have mercy on us and save us. Amen. Let us complete our prayer to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the precious gifts here presented, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for those who enter it with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have for our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the no Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. For a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us ask the Lord. For an angel of peace, a faithful guide, the garden of our souls and bodies, let us ask the Lord. For forgiveness and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask the Lord. For all that is good and beneficial to our souls and for peace in the world, let us ask the Lord. For the completion of our lives in peace and repentance, let us ask the Lord. For a Christian and to our lives, peaceful without shame and suffering, and for a good account before the awesome judgment seat of Christ, let us ask the Lord. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. Lord God Almighty, you alone are holy. You accept the sacrifice of praise from those who call upon you with their whole heart. Receive also the prayer of us sinners and let it reach your holy altar. Enable us to bring before you gifts and spiritual sacrifices for our sins and for the transgressions of the people. 
Make us worthy to find grace in your praise so that our sacrifice may be pleasing to you and that your good and gracious spirit may abide with us with the gifts here presented and with all your people. Through the mercies of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed together with your all holy, good, and life-giving spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Peace be with all. Let us love one another that with one mind we may confess. Christ is in our midst. the doors in wisdom let us be attentive i believe in one god father almighty creator of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible and in one lord jesus christ the only begotten son of god begotten of the father before all ages light of light true god of true god begotten not created of one essence with the father through whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became man. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, and suffered and was buried, and he rose on the third day according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the creator of life, who proceeds from the Father, together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke through the prophets. In one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the ages to come. Amen. Let us stand well, let us stand in awe, let us be attentive, that we may present the holy offering in peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father in the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is proper and right to sing to you, bless you, praise you, thank you, and worship you in all places of your dominion. For you are God ineffable, beyond comprehension, invisible, beyond understanding, existing forever and always the same. You and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit, you brought us into being out of nothing, and when we fell, you raised us up again. You did not cease doing everything until you led us to heaven and grant us your kingdom to come. For all these things, we thank you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit for all things that we know and do not know, for blessings seen and unseen that have been bestowed upon us. We also thank you for this liturgy which you are pleased to accept from our hands, even though you are surrounded by thousands of archangels and tens of thousands of angels, by the cherubim, seraphim, six-winged, many-eyed, soaring with their wings, singing the victory hymn, proclaiming, crying, and saying,
together with these blessed powers, merciful Master, we also proclaim and say, You are holy and most holy. You and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. You are holy and most holy and sublime is your glory. You so loved your world that you gave your only begotten Son so that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. He came and fulfilled the divine plan for us on the night when he was delivered up, or rather when he gave himself up for the life of the world. He took bread in his holy, pure, and blameless hands, gave thanks, blessed, sanctified, broke, and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you for the forgiveness of sins. Likewise, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Amen. Remembering, therefore, this command of the Savior and all that came to pass for our sake, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection on the third day, the ascension to heaven, the enthronement of the right hand of the Father, and the second glorious coming. We offer to you these gifts from your own gifts in all and for all. Please bow your heads. Once again, we offer to you this spiritual worship without the shedding of blood, and we ask, pray, and entreat you, send down your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts here presented. And make this bread the precious body of your Christ. Amen. And that which is in this cup, the precious blood of your Christ. Amen. Changing them by your Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So that they may be to those who partake of them for vigilance of souls, forgiveness of sins, communion of your Holy Spirit, fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven, confidence before you, not in judgment or condemnation. Again, we offer this spiritual worship for those who repose in the faith. Forefathers, fathers, patriots, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, sufferers, and forever righteous people. Especially for our most pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary. It is truly right to call Saint you the prophet, for and most of Above all, remember, Lord, our Archbishop and Father Savas, grant that he may serve your holy churches in peace, keep him safe, honorable, and healthy for many years, rightly teaching the word of your truth. Remember also, Lord, those whom each of us calls to mind and all your people. And all your people. And grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise your most honored and majestic name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. 
the mercy of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of you. And with your spirit. Having remembered all the saints, let us again in peace pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the precious gifts offered and consecrated, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that our loving God, who has received them at his holy, heavenly, and spiritual altar as an offering of spiritual fragrance, may return send upon us divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Having prayed for the unity of the faith and for the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commit ourselves in one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To we entrust you, loving Master, our whole life and hope, and we ask, pray, and entreat. Make us worthy to partake of your heavenly and awesome mysteries from this holy and spiritual table with a clear conscience for the remission of sins, forgiveness of transgressions, communion of the Holy Spirit, inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, confidence before you, and not in judgment or condemnation. And make us worthy, Master, with confidence and without fear of condemnation, to dare call you the heavenly God, Father, and to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Pater imon, o entis uranis, agias tito tonomasu, el teto i vasiliasu, genitito to telemasu, Os en uranon que vetis gis, tonarto ni monto ne piusion, dos mi simeron, que afes minto o filima taimon, os que mi safimen si felepte simon, que mi se nengi si mas espiras mon, alarise y mas apotu poniru. O te suestini vasilia que i dinamis que i doxa tu patros que tu iu que tu agiu pneumatos, nin que a i que istu se onas to ne ono. Irini pasi, tas ke falasimon to kirio klino me. We give thanks to you, Invisible King, by your infinite power you created all things, and by your great mercy you brought everything from nothing into being. Master, look down from heaven upon those who have bowed their heads before you. They have bowed not before flesh and blood, but before you, the awesome God. Therefore, Master, guide the course of our life for our benefit according to the need of each of us. Sail with those who sail, travel with those who travel, and heal the sick physician of our souls and bodies. By the grace, mercy, and love for us of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed together with your all holy, good, and life-giving Spirit, now and forever into the ages of ages. Lord Jesus Christ, our God, hear us from your holy dwelling place and from the glorious throne of your kingdom. You are enthroned on high with the Father and also invisibly present among us. Come and sanctify us and let your pure body and your precious blood be given to us by your mighty hand and through us to all your people. Let us be attentive, the holy gift for the holy people of God. I believe and confess, Lord, that you are truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the first. 
I also believe that this is truly your pure body and that this is truly your precious blood. Therefore, I pray to you, have mercy upon me and forgive my transgressions, voluntary and involuntary, in word and deed, known and unknown, and make me worthy without condemnation to partake of your pure mysteries for the forgiveness of sins and for life eternal. Amen. How shall I, whom unworthy, enter into the splendor of your saints? If I dare to enter the bridal chamber, my clothing will accuse me, since it is not a wedding garment. And being bound up, I should be cast out by the angels. In your love, Lord, cleanse my soul and save me. Loving Master, Lord Jesus Christ, my God, let not these holy gifts be to my condemnation because of my unworthiness, but for the cleansing and sanctification of soul and body and the pledge of the future life and kingdom. It is good for me to cling to God and to place in him the hope of my salvation. Receive me today, Son of God, as a partaker of your mystical supper. I will not reveal your mystery to your adversaries, nor will I give you a kiss as did Judas. But as a thief I confess to you, Lord, remember me in your kingdom. Behold, I approach Christ, our mortal King and God. Please forgive me, the unworthy priest and sinner. <clears throat> As a reminder, Sunday school staff and students will come first to communion and then parish council will dismiss the second time everybody else to receive. With the fear of God, faith and love draw near.
God save your people and bless your inheritance. <laughs> of ages. Let us be attentive, having partaken of the divine, holy, pure, immortal, heavenly, life-giving, and awesome tree, mysteries of Christ. Let us worthily give thanks to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Having prayed for a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. We thank you, loving Master, benefactor of our souls, that on this day you have made us worthy once again of your heavenly and immortal mysteries. Direct our ways in the right path. Establish us firmly in your fear. Guard our lives and make our endeavors safe. Through the prayers of our and supplications of the glorious Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary and of all your saints. For you are our sanctification and to you we give glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit now and forever and to the ages of ages. Let us depart in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Father, give the blessing. Lord, bless those who praise you and sanctify those who trust in you. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Protect the whole body of your church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them in return by your divine power and do not forsake us who hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your churches, to the clergy, to those in public service, to the armed forces, and to all your people. For every good and perfect gift is from above, coming from you, the Father of lights. To you we give glory, thanksgiving, and worship. To the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Christ our God, you are the fulfillment of long prophets, you have this procession of the Father, to us, and to the All is now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the Gospel reading today, we heard the parable of the poor man, Lazarus, and the rich man. And the parable begins with their earthly life. It begins by saying that Lazarus was a very poor man who didn't have anything to eat. He lived at the gate of the rich man, who remains nameless, and the rich man never helped Lazarus. He had an abundance because he was feasting every day and he was dressed in very expensive clothes, but never helped this man, Lazarus. And then the parable continues to talk about what happened in afterlife. This is what I would like to focus on today. What happens when we die? I'm sure all of you have asked yourself this question. It's a very natural question, by the way. Don't feel like there's anything morbid asking about that, because we shall see. It really teaches you how to live this life if you also think of what happens after we die in the afterlife. 
So I'm going to focus on the verses that come from this point onward in the parable, and you have them there in your bulletins, of course. The Gospel says, The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus in his bosom. Let me interrupt right there and point out that one of the greatest preachers of our church, St. John Christon, who lived in the fourth century, he points out that Lazarus is in the bosom of Abraham also as a way of reproach to the rich man who never showed hospitality to strangers. And that stands in contrast with what you see every time you come to church and you look in this direction, the hospitality of Abraham. <coughs> Three strangers came to Abraham and Sarah, and they showed them hospitality. Here is this man who has lived for years at the gate of the rich man, and he never invites him in. So by seeing Lazarus in the bosom of Abraham is a contrast within, uh, with, the, uh, uh, with the lack of hospitality in his case. It accuses the rich man. Another very important thing for us to know is that after we die, our souls are carried to heaven right away. Do you notice that in this parable, it doesn't speak about any time lingering around here, I know we're about to celebrate Halloween and it's all on, you know, souls lingering around and scaring you and all that stuff. <coughs> um, but not in this parable. In this parable, the souls go immediately, right? Immediately after they die, they go into the kingdom of heaven. And not only that, these souls are actually alive. These souls are actually alive. Abraham recognizes Lazarus and the rich man and knows exactly what, you, what each one of them has done, which means Abraham had an ability to look down and see their life. Moreover, the rich man recognizes Lazarus. We'll see that in just a second. So the dead are alive. This is why we pray for them in our church. This, was, this is why we have memorial services for the ones uh, who have gone before us. Because we believe that their souls do not die, their souls do not go dormant in a deep sleep, their souls are well and they can see everything that is happening, so we pray for them. Another important thing, and I find this very comforting, is that we recognize each other in heaven. I'm sure all of us here have lost somebody dear, right? And what a great comfort it is to know that when we pass to the other side, we recognize people. And if we're on the same side, we can be together, God willing. And this is a great source of comfort because when we bury somebody, we may have this idea of a definitive thing that has happened. And when it comes to this earthly life, that's true. But when it comes to eternity and to what will happen to us after we go, we find a tremendous amount of comfort in the idea that when we lose our loved ones, yes, we are not with them anymore, but they are with their loved ones. Let me repeat that. We're not with them anymore, but they are with their loved ones who, has already, who have already passed away. And that is a great deal of comfort for us. Another great deal of comfort is to know that when holy people die and they go up into the kingdom of heaven, they can pray for us. We call those saints. Saints are not just a figment of our imagination. Saints are real people who have died, who have had a prayerful life in this life, and who are then praying who are in communion with one another. You see that Lazarus goes to Abraham, right? A righteous of the Old Testament. And this is why in our church, we have memorial services for our loved ones who are not canonized as saints in the calendar. 
But when a person has been canonized as a saint, then we ask for their prayers for us because we believe that they can see our life here. We believe that there is no definitive separation between us and the other world. So this is what heaven is. Heaven is being with God, with the saints, and with our loved ones. Now that is something to work for. Do you agree? Something worth putting effort into. It's worth living a good life when we have the promise of heaven as communion with God, the saints, and our loved ones. Let me continue the reading. The rich man called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and pull my tongue, for I am in, I am in anguish in this flame. It seems kind of like scratching your head like this, doesn't it? Right? Why isn't the rich man talking to Lazarus directly? Saying, Lazarus, could you please have some mercy on me? Go dip your water into, dip your finger in water and come and cool me down. No, he talks to Abraham because he does not dare to talk to Lazarus. And that is because in afterlife, he is faced with the people he has wronged. And that's another important lesson. And another important lesson is to know that the rich man knew what mercy is. He knew what giving freely is. How do we know that? Because he's asking, Lazarus, come and uh, cool my tongue. But did he apply mercy in his life? Not once. Did he show mercy to Lazarus? Not once. But now he expects mercy. Well, that cannot happen. He knows what mercy is, and now he also experienced what it means not to receive that. And again, in contrast, it shows what true happiness is in this life. True, true happiness is to show mercy to others. True happiness is to be with others. True happiness is to build virtue, to have the joy that goes into the afterlife. But then Abraham answered him, and I continue reading, Son, remember that you in your lifetime receive your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in anguish. In other words, the good things that the rich man received in this life must have been because he probably has done some good. These things were owed to him, and he received them in his life. Lazarus must also have done something a little bit bad because he lived in that kind of life. That's what Abraham says. It's not always like that. But in this case, afterlife is basically true justice after everything has been compensated. And then he says, besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able and none may cross from there to us. And then he said, the rich man, I beg you, Father, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers so that they may warn them, lest they also come into this place of torment. You see how the rich man, all of a sudden, right after his death, he has like an epiphany, and he understands what is truly valuable. In his life, truly valuable was to have parties with his brothers every day. In afterlife, what is true value is to show mercy. Go warn my brothers so that they don't end up here. Again, we see how people who have passed away pray for us, right? And because he sees what his brothers are doing. But also it shows how the social status that we have in this life is nothing but a mask. And that mask, when we see God face to face, falls off. We may have the mask of rich the mask of respectable person. We might have the mask of the person who has accomplished a lot, but we go naked when we come to meet our God. And so we'd better accumulate the wealth that is true so that when we go to meet our God, we do have those good deeds. The safest barns are not the bank, but the stomachs of the poor. That is where we safely deposit everything we have when we share with the poor. 
which goes on to say that in afterlife we do not carry anything with us. May sound obvious, right? But I want to share with you a story. I don't know if it is historical fact or fiction, but the story about Alexander the Great. You all know, right? The Alexander the Great, the conqueror, uh, who by the age of 32, conquered just about most of the known world of his time. His empire stretched from India down to Egypt, all the way up to uh, the northern border of Greece. And that was the civilized world at that time. He had it all. And then he decided to return home. But on the way home, he fell extremely ill. It became clear that he was about to die before he reached home. And so he called his generals and he asked them to fulfill three wishes for him. Three wishes. The first wish was that his physicians should carry their body alone to show that doctors sometimes cannot prevent somebody from dying. The second and third wishes are extremely relevant for our subject today. The second wish says, I want the path leading to my grave to be strewn with gold, silver, and precious stones that are in my treasury while my body is being carried to be buried. Why? Why does he want the path to the tomb to have all this gold and silver and precious metals? He says, so that everybody would see that not even a fraction of that gold will come with me. My whole life, he says, I spent it chasing power and wealth. But whatever I earned on earth remains here. I want people to realize that it is a complete waste of your life to run after wealth and power. He goes powerless into afterlife. His third desire, his third wish, was that his hands would be out of the coffin dangling. I never buried anybody like that. I'm pretty grateful for that part, I must say. But, but pause for a second. Why does he want his hands dangling out of the coffin? He does that so that everybody understands that in this life, he came empty-handed, and that is exactly how he's going in the other life. The man who conquered the entire world takes nothing into afterlife. And in the end, even this most powerful man who conquered the world was conquered by death. What a lesson. What a lesson. I'm returning now to the story of the uh, rich man and Lazarus. And Abraham tells the rich man, I cannot send anybody. They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And the rich man argues a little bit, but if they see somebody risen from the dead, maybe they will believe. No, they have Moses and the prophets, they know it already. Which basically tells us that we know what we need to do for our salvation, isn't it? Take care of the poor, show hospitality to the stranger, focus on the happiness that lasts. All we need to do is to do these. And so, if we do this, we build the right relationship with God, we build the right relationship with the saints, and then our name will be remembered. Do you notice that in the story, the rich man does not have a name? But in our memorial services, we pray that somebody's name will always be remembered. May their memory be eternal, right? May their memory be eternal. By that, we don't mean that humankind will remember each and every billion and billion and billion of people that have died. What we mean is that God will remember them, that God will address them by name, which is not what happens to this rich man in the parable. Why? Because he did not build that kind of relationship with the saints, with God, with those who were in need. And so his memory is not eternal. But we conclude from reading this parable and from hearing this moment in history that when our bodies die, our souls continue to live. Not only that, but our souls will go 
and they will meet their loved ones. These loved ones have been waiting for them in the kingdom of heaven. And now they finally are reunited. We also see how when people die, when they are faced with death, they become more aware of what is truly valuable in life. That is love and mercy. And they also understand what is vain in life, the things that they cannot take with them, such as wealth and power, just like the rich man could not take anything with him, just like Alexander the Great was buried with his hands outside of the coffin. And we learn that if we accomplish mercy and love, then our memory will be eternal. Not necessarily in the sense that we will change history or accomplish tremendous things in life, but that we will have an eternal relationship with God. When our own time comes, having lived a good life, may we be with the saints, and may our memory be eternal. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. May the blessing of the Lord and His mercy come upon you through His divine grace and love, all is now and forever into the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to your God, our hope, glory to you. May Christ, our true God, who rose from the dead as a good, loving, and merciful God, have mercy on us and save us through the intercessions of His most pure and holy Mother, the power of the precious and life-giving cross, the protection of the honorable bodiless powers of heaven, the supplications of the honorable glorious prophet and for John the Baptist, the holy glorious and praiseworthy apostles, the holy glorious and triumphant martyrs, our holy God-bearing fathers of the holy righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, of Saint Cleopas and those together with him whose memory is celebrated today and of all the saints. Through the prayers of our holy fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. May the Holy Trinity bless all of you. Please be seated. Thank you very much for your generosity as we pass the trays and supporting our uh, ministries, the ministries of our parish. And while we do that, I would like to highlight uh, a few announcements. Uh, the first one is that uh, today the Holy Trinity Choir is going to sponsor our um, hospitality hour, and you are all invited to join the choir. If you have musical skills, you should join the choir. If you struggle to dress on Sunday morning, you should join the choir. <laughs> Did you notice they wear robes? That is extremely convenient, out of necessity in some cases. So that's another good reason. Do you notice we don't pass the tray in the choir? That's another reason. To so there are many, many ways, many, many reasons for And you get to sing with these wonderful people. You get to make the worship of our parish so much more beautiful. So uh, I do hope and pray that you will discern whether you have a singing voice and if you would like to use that for the benefit of the entire uh, community. Also, greetings from Father John, uh, from all the 31 pilgrims uh, that are now in Jerusalem. At midnight, their time, they had a liturgy at the sepulcher of Christ, at the tomb of Christ, and they prayed for all of us. And so we are in communion as we all worship the resurrected Christ, but we cannot wait until they come back and we hear about all the amazing things that they have seen uh, there. I have seen countless pictures, and I am telling you, it's difficult to read the Bible the same way once you see those places. Uh, so I encourage all of you, if you have a chance, to go to Jerusalem, to go to Palestine, to Israel, uh, go and visit these places. It's good for your soul. Also good for your soul is for you to attend the Philoptokos Festival of Tables. It will be on November 12th because you will see a lot of beauty. It's meant to promote creativity, fun, uh, joy, and community. And um, I would also like to say that today is Ohi Day. We celebrate Ohi Day. Do you all know what Ohi means in Greek? It means no. I should have asked the question differently, right? Do you all know what Ohi means in Greek? And you all said no. <laughs> it means no. <laughs> it means no. And that is when uh, the fascist armies 
came to invade Greece. And the Greeks said no, they were not going to capitulate, and they stood up against fascism. And since then, unfortunately, this disease has not died. I hope you all know that. We still need to say no. So as we remember that history, today also, let us just be intransigent when it comes to uh, such ideologies. But I want to end on a very positive note and tell you that today, I have seen in communion line somebody who's visiting us, uh, whom I have known since she was a two-year-old girl. Her name is Kira Clemens. Uh, she comes from North Carolina. Welcome, Kira. Um, do you have a yellow cross, Kira? Uh, Kira, no, okay. We do have normally yellow crosses for those who are uh, guests. So we've known each other and we stayed in touch, our families, for a very long time. Kira now moved in uh, the Pittsburgh area. Uh, she got a good job here. And so hopefully, Kira, we will see you more often. She comes from an absolutely amazing family. Um, her mother actually is from the greater Pittsburgh area, from Steubenville, am I correct? Yes, exactly. And uh, <laughs> several people go. For Steubenville Pride, yes, very good. Our Holy Trinity Parish, sister parish. Um, and then, uh, is your dad still a parish council president? He's over that. So her mom is happy right now. And <laughs> this is a very faithful family, just wonderful people. Please welcome Kira uh, in our midst. Continue to pray for our pilgrims to the Holy Lands. They will be here on Sunday, next Sunday, and we cannot wait to hear their stories. God bless you and have a blessed week.